Hi guys, my name is Mark Pesulanto and I'm a photographer. And today I'm going to take a photo walk with my Ricoh GR3 and I'm going to talk about the benefits of a, uh, of a simple gear setup. One of the obvious benefits of a simple setup like this is that there is very little to go wrong. You only need one hand, no zoom, no nothing, uh, no unnecessary extras. Uh, like uh, Robin, he has, unlike Robin, he has a very complicated setup <laughs> and you just had some problems, why don't you tell? So I was trying to do my own POV, uh, obviously I have to hold the video camera with one hand, uh, which is my DJI Action Cam, and I was shooting with another camera and I just only, I'm a human, I have <laughs> two hands. And human, I'm run, huh? <laughs> I'm running out of hands, so I can't control the zoom on this camera and I was stuck at the longest end and I accidentally cropped uh, the portrait someone's foot off which I wish I did not so like what Matty said uh, you know sometimes we have too much set up or too many things going on it can make things worse <laughs> so there you have it living proof of uh, how things can go wrong if you have too many things too complicated set up We are in Bukit Bintang, walking around these uh, side streets and this street art is new to me. Last time I was here, uh, 2019, there was no such art here in this area and this looks gorgeous and there are so many photo opportunities here even for a simple gear setup like this. This Bukit Bintang area is quite interesting and it's full of opposites or contradictions there are these really ragged edge alleys and right behind them can be a shiny new uh, upper and uh, high class uh, shopping mall or something like that a very interesting area to shoot in so it's Azul who uh, brought us here it was his idea to come here so what are we actually doing here why did you bring us here um, why hmm, why that's a very deep question yeah, uh, it is. There's some there's some new street art along these streets that we're gonna see. So I just discovered it a few days ago. So all the rest of us are gonna go there and take some pictures. All right. Perfect. Let's explore some more. <laughs> what I like about the fixed lens on this camera or any camera fixed prime lens is that it forces me to look certain pictures suitable for this lens and I kind of exclude everything else and it makes I feel it makes my shooting experience so much more simple I sort of have less things to observe and look for because I can right away exclude some things that are not suitable for this particular lens and uh, I can just concentrate on finding suitable pictures for this lens. Obviously, some people will think it's a, it's a restriction or a limitation, but I think limitations are good for photography. They make you think, they make you solve uh, the problem or problems, and uh, they will teach you to become a better photographer. I just realized I forgot to turn on the auto ISO on my Ricoh, so there are some things that can go wrong with even a, the simplest uh, setup. But now I'm gonna turn on the auto ISO because some of these alleys are actually quite uh, dim, not so brightly lit, so I'm gonna need a little bit higher than ISO 100 in some situations. You don't always get the best light when you are photo walking and today it seems to be quite flat light and we can't uh, get those nice light and shadow things that uh, could be possible <clears throat> on these side streets but today unfortunately it's not possible we just have to concentrate on the colors <laughs> So Azul, explain your gear today. Oh, this... Why why that setup? 
what is good about it and what is bad about it? Uh, the most basic kit, 16 to 80 uh, lens, um, is brilliant for, you know, you can zoom in and out without having to change your lens. Um, the Probably the only disadvantage is when you go uh, wide at 16mm, it's the pictures get a bit wonky. Ah. Yeah, that's it. But I love this lens, it's really good and it's very um, was what versatile and flexible perfect when I shoot uh, things like this street art or street photography in general I mostly use P mode on my Ricoh GR3 it's the best and it usually gives me the best results but sometimes I want a specific shutter speed for example to freeze action then I switch to uh, the um, shutter priority mode and always auto ISO except today I forgot to turn it on because I was the other night I was shooting some handheld uh, night photos and for some reason I turned on the lowest ISO for that purpose. Uh, I don't exactly remember why but things happen. I'm a little bit suspicious here. Robin has been using that tiny Lumix setup so many times lately so let's hear what the real reason is behind that. Well, Mati, I have had this Panasonic GM1 before many, many years ago and I sold it off and you know what? It was my biggest regret <laughs> of a camera being sold off. I kind of like that this is really, really tiny and you can do a lot for such a small camera. It's just, I don't know, I think it's the fun factor. Uh, plus, I can use all my micro photos lenses on this camera, so why not? I found one uh, really good price and because it's so small and it's so light, it doesn't take space in the camera bag. I just want to bring it out to shoot more and more. I so wish we could have some direct heart sunlight, but then again, that's one of the things you have to sort of take the advantage of the situation and not uh, uh, hope for something that you can't get. And I can't change the weather today, so I have to deal with the flat light and, flat light and try to make the best of it. Some rare behind the scenes footage of Robin <laughs> making his videos. Unseen. <laughs> uncut footage. This is Jalan Alor, the famous restaurant street where every tourist has to come on their first visit to KL. The food is actually not bad here, it's just a little bit overpriced. Because of the really, really flat light, I'm mostly looking for these color combinations and uh, not so much light and shadow because it's not likely to happen today, this morning. I really like this GR for street and travel photography because it's so simple and the feature set is so well thought out for this particular purpose. I know some people are going to say that it's too limited because of the fixed lens and uh, it's too expensive and true it's not for everyone but I think adding uh, interchangeable lenses and other things like that it would add the more complexity and it would not be the same simple camera anymore. And some people also say that a small micro four thirds body with a small lens is the same thing. But it's not the same thing. It's something similar and it can work for someone and it's a more budget friendly option. But it's not the same thing, I can tell you that. This is Malaysian way to cross a street. I'm following Robin Wong to <laughs> illegal activities. Don't, don't follow me, don't follow me. <laughs> <laughs> you did not see this. <laughs> okay, after that one. 
Dr. Harris is here with me and he has his 100 megapixel Fuji and now he's going to tell you the benefits of 100 megapixels for street photography. I think it's pretty obvious questions to ask and well to think about it, there are benefits obviously. The main thing is actually being able to crop to get to what you want. You might not get the actual uh, benefit if you're shooting uh, tally, but if you take the whole view and then you want to actually just focus on a few bits in the in the frame then the large megapixel will offer you their options the drawback is actually the fact that the size of the file is huge so you have to actually uh, be able to actually have enough power on the back end to actually process all that if you're just a casual shooter often more often than not i still carry my lower megapixel kit all right the sun is out and we can possibly get some nice light and shadow photos also today and that is really nice I hope you enjoyed this little uh, photo walk in Bukit Bintang with some uh, questionable friends. Thanks so much for watching and uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below if you don't live in Finland. Thanks so much and I'll definitely see you in the next video. <laughs>